Hi all, welcome to this week's episode of the Ippy Insider. We have guest Regina Mangan on. Uh, apologies about a short delay. Um, I had a technical glitch on my end, um, but we both we both embraced it, and I think that's the key message of this uh, podcast. So Regina, you're more than welcome. Uh, I hope you're keeping well. Yes, great. Thank you very much. Listen, before we go any further, uh, what's with the Panama hat? Well, I'm wearing the hat because I wanted to give a message today. And my message is, guys, do not be afraid to stand out. This is really, really important. And I put the hat on especially for you. You know, stand out, feel fear, and just do it anyway. So brilliant. It kind of takes us in nicely to, to where we started off back in March. We started off, you know, actually, I must say, it's, it was my first podcast. Um, and Regina stepped up, as, as she usually does. Um, to, to, to come on and how has technology over the last four and five months for Liberty Blue really impacted your success? Well look I suppose frankly I'd say that um, you know you're probably looking at me here saying she's cool calm and collect and you've just no idea the drama that went on behind the scenes for the last hour. I got home and we talk about basic technology like electricity. I didn't have any. The ESB disconnected us for a few hours. They're doing roadworks. So I had no power to do this. So I had to run down to my partner's office. And it's just, then I had a problem with my laptop, with my volume. And, you know, we, like, I do get quite stressed sometimes over technology, but you just got to get on with it. And I asked Cormac, who works with me, um, Cormac, how would you describe me to work with in, when it comes to our social media and our technology? And he wrote down, when asked to describe Regina's attitude to tech, Cormac says, Regina's results driven. No is not an option. He then adds, she often says things like, here's what I want to do. Just find a way. And you know what? There's usually a way. So like, I don't always know what I'm doing, but I, I follow people that I admire. So for example, we started doing these business spotlights and this is my former tripod. Um, it broke the morning I was doing the business spotlight and so I had to improvise and put masking tape around it. And you know what, the video turned out amazing, but nobody knew the kind of botched up piece of kit I was using. And so what? That's kind of the stuff that goes on. And I think sometimes we look at people and we put them on a pedestal and we think, oh, I wouldn't be able to do it. Guys, I'm telling you, if I can do it, anyone can, because I'm horrendous on technology. But I do see the benefits. So how has it impacted? So I suppose the first biggest um, win for us is that I had been courting um, a client probably 12 months now, and he had discounted us. And COVID hit, and he was working from home. And he could see what we were doing in terms of our marketing. And I'll talk about that in a moment. We've now won that big piece of business. Like it's a really big piece. I'm not in a position to, to say what it is at the moment. But he saw how we um, do things. So like Facebook Live, I would say that's a huge thing for us. We're the only agents um, that I see doing. And Ray Cooks are amazing for doing videos. They're always out there with their videos. In terms of creating an event, we create events um, and we invite people to attend. But we go to our audiences. You can create an audience. And like this is stuff I only learned in the last year and a half on Facebook. You know, you can put in your databases and then you can create your event. And like all our tenants um, are in our audiences. And we're not breaking any GDPR rules because when people sign up to Facebook, they basically, we basically open the world up to every movement that we make, like Big Brother. So we can take all that um, data, put it into the event. And I had a lady show up to a Facebook Live and she was a tenant of ours. And I said, oh, how did you hear about the event? And she said, now I knew how she heard because I had her name and I was able to cross-reference her. She said, oh, and an, an ad came up on my social um, for this event because we do our Facebook Lives before we put our properties on the portals. And I think that it's very dangerous for us as agents to solely rely on portals like Daft to My Home. I think it's really important that we create our own channels. So somebody I really admire is Lisa Novak in Australia, and I would recommend you to follow Lisa. 
Lisa is now one of the top agents um, in Australia. I think you've had her as a guest, have you? Yeah, yeah, she's super. Yeah. She's super advocate for, 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 for social media. And yeah, so she's my hero, definitely. And you know, when we admire someone, we don't have to take everything they do verbatim. You just pick pieces. But she sells through her channels. Now, it's a very different market. But I can tell you that we have won three house listings from our social media. And like that's over 9,000 euros worth of business. Okay. Brilliant. So, so that's tangible return on investment. Then we have this huge piece of business that we've won. So I think Facebook, if I was to pick all the channels, I would say that is the most important. Mm. Perry Parra touched on that as well as going deep on one rather than scarce on, on many. And, and, and with, you know, with that, with, with the likes of what you're doing, I mean, it's, it's very forward thinking, but again, I saw that I, I saw, and I've had chaos with technology and we've all, we all have it. Zoom meetings break, they don't start, you know, and, and it's about staying calm um, and, and, and just trying to figure out, right, how do we get the end result here? And, and, and that's for us is, is kind of, is kind of our main, you know, right. What's the end goal? Like the angle here is to get you on the podcast or, or whether I might have a technical glitch, the, the electricity could go here tomorrow or sit right now. Um, and then I'm knocked off and then everyone else can hear it. So in terms of the raw, raw and real marketing tools you've used, what, what, listen, I know you've got a huge amount of systems, but what, let's say top three are really working for you right now. Okay. So you need a little bit of kit, right? So I have this fluffy mic in my car, the back seat of my car and it carries in a little bag. This plugs in, you take your iPhone cover off um, and plug it in, and that's your mic. So, you know, if you're outside and it's windy, then this mic just makes the volume sound much better. Um, I have a mantra, perfection's the enemy of done, right? So, you know, just get on with it. And, you know, I think people, we need to remember that through social media, Social is social, and people love a little bit of raw. They, that is why I just we we mix it up. So we mix it up with our property um, live events, then our expert advice. It's about giving value. You cannot be selling all the time, putting up ads, hard sell, hard sell. I think that's really really important. Giving something back. So we're engaging. We're giving. Um, we're giving. Um, information sometimes whether it's tips and tricks or advice on selling your property or if it's a, a, a buyer's guide or a seller's guide then we're collecting data then we're asking them to join our newsletter list and we send a newsletter out every month and look guys it's a big effort it really is and the marketing is a machine but it's worth it and we're trying to grow our social media following particularly on Facebook. So we've just done a competition and the competition's only up two hours and we have um, a winner by the sound of things. Pardon? You have a winner by the sounds of things. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know how to, <laughs> I, I don't know how to turn off those notifications. I'm sorry about that. You're fine, you're so, fine, you're fine. So I can tell you from that competition, I wrote it down somewhere, we had 29 shares. So I will hope that maybe within two weeks of the competition that we would have hopefully an extra thousand followers. So that means our channels are growing. We want to put our properties on our channels before they hit the portals because people will get exclusive access. And that's what Lisa Novak swears by. And I'm a firm believer in following a process that's tried and tested and proven by really successful people. So in terms of what's working, okay, um, we do a lot of community spotlights business spotlights that's really good for your we're expanding our reach um we've got more followers more likes more engagement we're doing good by highlighting a local business so it's bigger exposure and you know what it's great fun mm. and it's adding more fun to the job and you know what if the job isn't fun then it's crap and you're just happier and better and, you know, I do believe that in giving, we receive. So when we're helping somebody and we're not necessarily looking for anything, good comes out of that. So 
the video, the business spotlights have the biggest volume of engagement. Okay, really, really big. Um, we we do our expert advice. Um, our 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 e guides are huge. So we win business from those because we're building databases. So a very important piece of, of kit that we use is called Zapier. I'm sure you know it. Z A P I E R. So it's it's a very good tool. It automates the lead generation process. So with it, you can create, I'm just reading this, create an automated workflow or zap. This allows us to automatically send out a guide to someone who signed up to our lead generation advert and then add them to our MailChimp list. Now we get it, so when we put up a, a seller's guide and someone downloads it, because of Zapier, um, we get an automated email to tell us that Kenneth Kelly has downloaded your guide and we have your contact details. So we phone you very quickly and um, we have a chat now. Maybe two thirds of those could be people in different territories, different locations, or they clicked on it by accident. You're always gonna have a bit of that. But like if you got one listing out of a campaign, you know, depending on the value of it, it could be, it could be very well worthwhile. Um, it is a long process. Yeah. It's, a great, it's, a great, it's a great point. The whole automation piece is really evolving. And I believe what you're saying about the whole portal piece and moving, you know, moving to, to having the, to have the ability and the control over your listings, because essentially it's your business. You've gone out and done the hard graft of building a personal brand and you know, I mean, you've been in business 24 years and, and you've, and you've built a sales team, but you've built that around the, around the people within the business. And it's commendable to see in, in, in an industry whereby there's a lot of people hiding behind. And I'm not afraid to say this. this is, there's people hiding behind brands and not being allowed to step, a, step, a behind, step in front of the, the brand. Because I'm telling you, I believe that, that the guys who step in front of the brand and in front of the shop will have more success for the business than the people who are hiding in the corner of the office. And not allowed to build that. So you talked about raw, and I want to go a little bit deeper on it, and, and because I know that from from seeing your transition of videos, it's great to see that you're now just picking the camera up while you're on a walk, and you're on the beach in bloody Dungarvan. Or so let's go a little bit deeper on the fear, getting past the fear. My comrades in the UK say you always walk by beaches. I do try and create, pick nice backgrounds, to be honest, because. I do think a picture paints a thousand words and people can see where you live. Um, yeah, and I've started doing videos without makeup, okay? And, you know, my woolly hat, because I think we need to give people a sense of the real us. And, you know, our business is very much based on trust. So we can talk about brands till the cows come home, but people do business with people they trust and like. And so if, if I can show my true authentic self, you know, it's, it, it, it does work, you know, it really does. And, and, and I think in terms of the content, it's important to have a mixed repertoire. So whether that's a lifestyle video, whether it's a video talking about somebody in the business community, whether it's um, announcing, like I, I'm getting a site to sell in Stradbilly. It'll be going to the market next week. So I went down to the beach in Stradbilly that's what was on my mind when I got up this morning. That after the listing, I go down to the beach, um, did um, a Facebook Live, and there was two guys on horses and came over to me and said, you've left your lights on. And sure, I forgot I was still on the live. I'm running across the beach. Then I said, sugar. But you can delete a live, especially if you delete it straight away. So, of course, anyway, I redid it again, live. And you just have to kind of get over yourself. And I think... Practice makes perfect, and I always still have a little bit of anxiety doing it, you know. But you know, just do it anyway is kind of my attitude, regardless. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant. And, and let's go on towards some, some some form of like trends or what you're doing because I can see you're evolving, even since March, Regina. Like you've evolved from your strategy. You're creating more content. You're then repurposing that same content. And it's, it's nearly never ending. And I have it myself with content. It's like you've built, you've built this massive bank of content now that you can just pick from. So how do we, 
let's try and let's try and concise it to social trends let's say for 2021 well what's very interesting if you look at other sectors and let's look at sport and what's happened with covid um live streaming has now taken over television right so the matches are live streamed the ga is is streaming matches and you know the world that we're in is moving very fast and we see that COVID accelerated the way people buy and the way they research and it's it's absolutely inevitable that I think that it's very dangerous for us as agents to rely on portals. I think that's the biggest risk that agents need to mitigate against. I think as well that for me anyway we decided that we want to be an attraction agent so we don't want to be going into the interview room with three or four other agents and i'm definitely not winning listings on being the cheapest so that was our strategy during lockdown so we want to be the cheapest we're not the same and we're not for everyone and we don't want to be for everyone so we recognize that it's to work out who's your audience um i think the whole key is consistency right consistency is king so you better just keep putting your content out. So YouTube is a fantastic channel. Set up a YouTube channel if you don't have one. And it's an amazing platform uh, to use as a library. And I went on it the other day and I hadn't been on our YouTube channel for ages. I went, oh my God, have we got that many amount of videos? Because we keep doing them. And then Cormac, myself and Marie do most of them ourselves. And then Cormac um, uh, works with us on our social media. He probably does maybe 10% of the videos, we do them ourselves and then he'll put the logo on it. Um, Veed is a really good tool for putting your text on because that's really important. If someone's in bed with their partner, their husband, um, they don't want to turn the volume up. If someone's on a bus or they're in company, so subtitles are critical. Not for every video, for a lot of them. Now, I tried using Veed and I nearly burst my eyeball, to be honest with you, with the stress of it. So I said, I'm not doing that anymore. So Cormac puts the text on, right? It's not for me, right? Um, so it's, I heard a really good quote from um, Sanjay Gandhi. He's my mentor. Um, he says, the pilot doesn't serve the drinks, okay? So it's to remember that and we cannot do everything. So Maria is the best example of social media that I, like it's something I've been fairly comfortable with because I've been, doing it for about three years, but growing and growing. But Maria was not happy to do this. And she'll be watching this later on, right? She just did not want to do it. And I asked her before I came on the call, Maria, why do you think doing what we're doing is so important? She said, well, I, I, I just loved what she said. She said, Regina, you need to tell them that this is not an overnight job. Don't expect overnight results. These yeah. are all the things I said to Maria a year and a half ago, and now she's saying it. Relaying them. Um, yeah. Um, she said, we definitely ramped it up this year. So they have, everybody needs to look at the long game. We've definitely won extra buyers as a result because we're getting properties in front of more eyeballs. So I have a property, Cargain Lodge in Kilrossity. Nearly 30,000 people have watched that on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And Facebook Live, the algorithm drives the video. And that's why we do so much live. Facebook loves, as you know, kind of loves live. It's raw and real. There's, it's like me running across the beach, forgetting that I was on live. There's no, you know, it's, it's live. Um, and I said to her, Maria, does it add fun to your job? She said, definitely, she loves it. Now, Maria started to be recognized, so her profile has really grown. Um, when she, she's gone to the beauticians and different places, people sitting next door pre-COVID, you know, recognized her. So in terms of doing appraisals, if we're invited to appraise a property, we're meeting people who've seen us already online. They're not meeting us for the first time. And, and that's you've really sowed the seed. important. Pardon? You've sowed the seed with them already, which is, which is massively important. I, I had a quote there that from our, from our conversation during the week that I was kind of just kind of think, well, what you asked me, what am I, what are we doing differently? And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, you're not comparing yourself to anyone. And the, and then I looked up, I was like, Com comparison is the thief of joy. And I, and I, and I, and I think that you guys are, you're not comparing yourself. You're doing it authentically. You're, 
it, it's the character as well. It's showing like Ireland's small. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone talks to everyone. Especially, I, I can only imagine what it's like in Waterford in, in smaller towns around Ireland. And I think in agents embracing social media during the current climate would be more profitable. Oh, well, I've just given you absolute yeah. facts there, right? Yeah. And like, as I said to Maria, there were days where I was doing videos and I thought I was talking to myself, right? Um, and I, I said to her, right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to trust the process. We're just going to do it. And, and someday it'll work. So, for example, um, we um, got a voucher, you know, um, the trading online voucher, right? Um, so we hired a company called Marla in Waterford and they helped us work out our client personas. So a persona being a profile of your client. So one of our profiles is Larry. And Larry is a man between 40 and 55. He's living in Dublin. He likes golf, he likes a glass of wine, all these things, right? So remember one day Maria did a video and I said, you never posted on LinkedIn. Larry won't see it. Oh, yes, you're right. Sure enough, Larry rang. Now, he wasn't Larry, but he was the persona Larry. And we've won a number of rentals from Larry, and he looked at a property to buy from us there recently, an investment property. Then I did a video on yields for LinkedIn, and we, I sold an apartment from that in Johnstown Bridge. And the same gentleman is looking for other properties for his clients. LinkedIn is absolutely very very powerful again you've got to take the long the lot play the long game on it you know it's really important and in terms of linkedin commenting and liking other people's posts and linkedin doesn't like sharing and it, it prefers you to do to write a comment about three lines and if you tag people cause sometimes i'll say neve gifney and i are great buddies and like i might say check this out neve gifney and Maria Clifford, have you seen it? Um, and so that helps the person who has put up the post. So it's reciprocal, you know. It's very time consuming, but it does work. Mm -hmm. The consistency is the biggest thing. I remember starting off social media and starting off, you know, building the presence, especially for businesses who are start from literally zero. Um, you know, going into some of the, you know, what, what do you think 2021 can really bring for the property industry, given that we've just come in and out of a pandemic? Well, we don't know what the market's going to be like. There are just so many unknowns. In some instances, you know, economists are talking about, you know, um, a crash, right? We've already, we're already in a recession, but um, we don't know what's coming. And I think that we've got to stand out, hence the hat. So what are you going to do to stand out? Because what do we want? I don't know what, I know what I want from life, right? I want to be happy, obviously love and safety and having enough money, all that's very important, but I want to be happy and I want joy in my job. And a lot of the stuff we do does bring fun to the job. Now there are days where, you know, when you have technical glitches, but, and then we, we need the business, we need the listings. and that's the end goal. Mm. So if we need the listings and consumer buying habits have changed and are going to continue to change, then we've got to get in front of them. And how do we get in front of them? Via the platforms we discussed. So you've got Instagram, Twitter, you've got um, your Facebook, obviously, and LinkedIn. Um, when I think of agents in Dublin, I often think of um, Sinead Began. Um, and, and she's really strong on Instagram and she's a beautiful window that her sister um, designed for her. Now, how would I know that only that she put that on Instagram? So if somebody rang me and they had a property um, in the area that she's in, then I'd think of her straight away. So she's front of mind. So I think front of mind is the key thing. So we want to, what are the trends going to be? It's all about social media. Like, and I think you have to have your gear in the car and be ready to jump when an opportunity comes, you know? Um, so I'm like, bring my son, yeah, I'm bringing my son to the cinema on Saturday. I'll do a little interview with the owner of the cinema, right? Because his cinema has been closed. 
So we'll do a quick five minute interview. I'll have the tripod in the car. Now, when he has friends looking to buy, who do you think he's thinking of? Yeah, yeah, because you've offered that um, industry value as well. And I, I was thinking that you've, you've got, you, you've got your database, you're building your database from, I think, six or seven sources, probably more, I don't know. But I think that's a huge learning for agents to build a database, but have to have over five sources coming through to define those sources and then to get in and categorize them into personas and know, allow automation do the afterworks of how they're emailed or what they're sent, if they're sent ebooks, if they're sent... But I mean, if hats off, I know the topic of conversation is the Panama hat today. Uh, hats off. It's, it's commendable to see what you've done since March um, and the whole team in Liberty Blue. So l last topic, I know we've been speaking and I know you're, I know you're, you're tired from your event last night. Oh, I'm great. I, I've, I've plenty of content here to talk about. <laughs> you plenty. I, I'm, I'm running out of questions. <laughs> well, well, look, um, did you want to ask me something there before? Maybe I, I, I give a few points. Yeah, so let's go into let's go into some some top tips for agents, whether they're starting off or new agents. I know I know there's going to be a huge um, amount of agents who have been furloughed or put on the side from the some of the big brands looking to either go off on their own or looking for another job. So let's look at ten top tips for agents going into twenty twenty one that could really help them. You know. Okay. Well, your your phone is your is your is your TV channel, basically. And if you haven't done video and you're nervous about it, start doing them just for yourself. Now, we're all fears critical of ourselves. You just, just need to get over that, you know, um, and do a little bit of practice. That's what I used to say to Maria when she was starting out, you know, get your camera. Hi, Regina here. I'm a Caribbean Lodge. Now, and you could then, when you start to get comfortable, just do short videos. Check out this amazing garden. Now, if you want to start off where you're not necessarily behind the camera all the way, you could start with little bits. So it's a gradual process. You know, you might think, well, there's no way I'm doing a nine minute interview with someone. No, it's baby steps first. How do you eat an elephant? A bite at a time. So I would say the number one thing is you need to be doing video. Flat photos are no longer enough. Mm. People expect more. That is, that is just the way it is. Live streaming and live then is the next thing. If you're doing videos, move to live. You know, that's, that's where it's at. Um, look at your community and how you can help people in your community. Um, I think that's really important, your networking. Uh, it's been harder to network offline because of COVID. So what about some networking online? Reach out to other agents, grow your network. These are your advocates when somebody says you know like hopefully through some of this people will say well when we think of Waterford we think of Liberty Blue that's my goal so if any of you have anybody that needs assistance in Waterford call Maria or myself so that's mm -hmm. just an example so you're networking your videos I wasn't expecting this question by the way folks um, <laughs> well, check out Zapier that's a really good tool Z-A-P-E-I-E-R your newsletters, you've got to be sending out newsletters. So if you can imagine, you're like, you want to make, um, you want to connect with someone, apparently they've got to see you in seven different places. So they may see you on social, they may hear about you, they may see you in the newspaper, and ideally your newsletter is growing. So what do we, we, put, we put all kinds of stuff into our online newsletters. So we put a good few videos in, um, and we repurpose a lot of our information, a lot of our stuff, you know, um, go back over. Like our newsletter that's going out now in the next 48 hours has um, a big kind of well done to the water at hurlers. Um, then we have a Christmas message. We've got, um, we just got a new online uh, magazine, which to be honest was torturous, but it's done now. Um, so we put a link to that. Um, then one of our guides that we did and then very importantly Maria with your help through IPI did a market report for the market in Waterford now that does take a few hours to put together but it's a way of connecting with your 
um, your potential customers. So this big piece of business that we won, we were, he had said no, he saw our social, but every week I'd be sending him messages on WhatsApp. So um, I'd be sending him, uh, when our newsletter's done, I'd WhatsApp him that. When I do a market report, I'd WhatsApp him that. I love WhatsApp, guys. It's brilliant. So, um, you know, just sending you all this stuff on. And most of the time he never replied. I feel like he's a personal stalker, but so what? <laughs> right? He didn't actually tell me to stop, so I presumed it was okay. We've won the business. And I remember saying one day, what? I hope you don't mind. I, like, I'm, see the way I'm, I'm contacting you all the time. Imagine what we like with buyers. He loved it, right? So, so, um, so WhatsApp, YouTube is great. Set up your YouTube channel. We've only 20 subscribers, so it's not like we're doing great things there. I'm only now I'll leave it in the comments. Get... Pardon? I'll leave it in the comments and people can people can start following it it's just consistent yeah. it's consistently just plugging it across other other channels we don't have huge either but it's that content you're going to still have you can start doing little bite-sized pieces of those videos you've done you can chop the videos down yeah it's a library and in a way right like I, i'm we're just doing it right we're not kind of thinking too much about stuff we're just doing it and just getting on with it, it goes in our diary we've agree a content plan at the start of the week we need a video for buyers. We need a bit. Of, um, we need a, a, a business spotlight. We need this. We need that. So we know at the start of the week we've got to get it done. So, for example, we decided for our tenants that we would do a video for them on how to leave a property, um, how to get all your deposit back, and some tips on what on your admin and what you need to sort out when you're moving. Because we have in a big long letter, but people don't read it. So Maria's done that video in like five chunks. So we'll put that on our fixed flow, um, which is our maintenance portal. We then break it down into different social posts because it's in bite sizes. Um, we put it out on our newsletter for owners so they can see our landlord newsletter so they can see we're taking this really seriously. We put it on YouTube and put some tags, meta tags to it. So if somebody is Googling, you know, how to leave your property, to clean then our videos there so i said maria you could be the, the video the video queen of of getting your deposits back the deposit <laughs> queen but, you know it's it's as you said repurposing it going on to let's say, let's say your website because i've looked at your website and it's different to other agencies where, where did the, the guys in design bricks did a good job on that and you're happy with you know and i can see it it's constantly evolving you look at your website five years ago and look at it now do you see yeah. that being one of your major uh, platforms in the coming years? Yeah, so John Kennedy um, was responsible for that and his team, um, and we're delighted with it. It's WordPress, which means obviously we can edit and change it and need to put in our videos up in it. We put our everything on it to keep it refreshed. But I think, I think it's very important for all of us to be changing all the time. Like in 12 months time, I'm sure I won't be happy with that website. You know, it'll need to be modified, you know. And I think another very important tip is to keep learning. You know, Zapier, right? What did I know about that? <laughs> I, I, didn't want, I didn't really want to know too much about it, only that this was the tool that you needed to get the job done, basically, right? That was enough for me. And then I said, Cormac, sort it out, please. But there is a guy called Paul Long. He is the guru of gurus when it comes to real estate Facebook. So um, I'm sharing all of this with you, even my competitors, right? Mm. So you have Paul a lot Long, of value. You have a lot of value to offer it, you know? So, so um, Paul Long is brilliant. And I did watch a lot of stuff. Um, during the first lockdown in particular. So this is where we're learning, but we're constantly learning. You know, Facebook Live, we had our Facebook Live promotion and then we redesigned it because I saw the way a, an estate agent in the UK does his, so now ours looks better than it did a month ago. So you can come up with something, but it, I think the most important thing is to be slicking it up all the way, sharpening the saw. So while we're happy with the website now, delighted, I've no doubt, 
in 12 months time, it'll have run its course. The same way with the videos. So the next thing for me now is um, to do, I have, um, uh, I'm going to get a really well-known chef to cook in this beautiful new listing I have um, next week. So that's my next thing um, to create something else. What can we do? Because we don't want to be boring. Like we're doing all this stuff, but you have to be careful that it's not the same as, you know, so we have to keep stepping it up. Is the Ippy team invited to this dinner party? <laughs> <laughs> Online dinner party. Online okay. dinner party. Yeah, we can tune in through Zoom. Don't worry. Absolutely. And the moral of the story is share, share and share. Yeah, um, super. So, so I thought it would be Zapier sending out your newsletters, Facebook Live, Facebooks, make your videos, be if you're into it anyway, start and do small ones. You know, find a way that you're comfortable. You know, Maria started off where it was easier for her if Cormac held the camera and that she didn't have to look at herself in the camera, that she found that less intimidating. I said, look, whatever makes it work for you, mm-hmm. but it's very important you're authentic to your true self. So we must all be ourselves because people will see if you're trying to be somebody else, you know. Um, and you know what? If it's if it's a little bit not perfect, that's okay too. People, people love our bloopers. They love those. They get actually great laughs, you know, because, and then I did a video one day where I said, guys, you've no idea. You know, when I record a video, it could be one take, it could be 11 takes. It just depends on the form, tired, you know, but it's, 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 it's not always easy, you know, but you just got to get the job done. And if you know at the start of the week, it's on your to-do list, Stories are really important on Facebook and Instagram because they their reach is way higher. Again, that's repurposing your post. It's doing the video, you share, you put it out on your stories. Um, that just drives the traffic. Um, um, what else? Our CRM system, important to mention that. We use Quaint. Um, so it's, we kind of, we, we brushed up on this recently making sure that, um, you know, that we, that all of the inquiries that come in from the portals are entered onto a quaint and then we create new audiences for a social and then to get permission to send out different pieces of content to them. So we're, we're all the time trying to, to kind of improve on that, but your CRM system is very, very important. Very, very important. Um, In a nutshell, I would say, provide expert advice and stay in front of your audience, always offering your audience the option to contact you when it's, when it's good for them. And Lisa Novak always said that she, her husband set up the company and she over 20 years ago, and she worked in an admin, she never was in sales. And she got in to the sales side of it two years ago and decided that this was her best friend and started doing loads of videos. She said she thought she was talking to herself. She might only get two likes or people wouldn't say anything. They wouldn't write any comments. Then she, about a year in, a year and a half, bang. She started getting um, listings and she's now built that to just an unbelievable level. And we've noticed that there's people, like Maria did a viewing today with a guy and he was talking about our videos and he said, I love it. I love the virtual tours. I love the walk through the properties. I've had a good few people say that to me. And he has never once liked anything because I know him. He's never once liked or commented anything. So just because people aren't liking or commenting, it doesn't mean they're not watching you. Love it. You know? Regina, um, I'm going to, I'm going to cut, we're going to cut it there. And that was absolutely brilliant. Um, and I'm, uh, and I congratulate you for five years with the sales side of the business. Um, hugely commendable and, and hats off to everyone in the team. Thank um, you. guys, this is, is going to be available on Spotify, YouTube, on Regina's channel as well. We're going to push it out, um, across the Christmas break. There was so many takeaways, um, within this, get the notepad out. I know I have mine here writing notes. There's always a learning from Regina. Um, she's very approachable. So I'll put her details in the comments below along with the website. Um, and anything we mentioned, I know we mentioned a couple of pieces of tech and uh, that might be new to some, 
So they'll be all mentioned in the comments. And uh, please tune in again next week. We're going to be doing a podcast every week this week, uh, which is I'm testing myself. I'm also trying to get a lot of more people into the platform. So Regina, thanks a million. I just had one last point, if you don't Go mind. We do need to collaborate more as agents. And this is really, really important. So you might have a listing um, that you could speak to another agent about sharing or, you know, you might have a buyer or I, I just think in general, it seems to be very much a May fame um, type of setup. Like there's one agent now in Washford that I'm, you know, we're doing a good bit of collaboration with and it's a buzz, you know, it really, really is. And I think that that would be, I would love to see our industry doing more of that because if we leave the ego at the door and focus on the customer and the customer service, it's a rising tide that lifts all boats. And never, never be the king. I was on the phone to a Limerick man there earlier on. He's a good friend of mine and a good mentor. And he said, Kenneth, never be the king. Don't be worrying. Don't be comparing yourself to anyone else other than yourself yesterday. Um, but you're right. I think groups of agencies like conversations that we're having, you know, in the lead up to these conversations, we're bouncing ideas back and forth. And I think there is an element of community um, forming from the, off the bat of COVID. And, and I think, yes, you're right. A collaboration of, of uh, I think we're onto an idea here, Regina. Um, a collaboration of, 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 of agents who are like-minded and share the same interests of, of, of evolving the industry for the better. That's all we're trying to do here. We're trying to, we're trying to make it better for everyone else within the industry so that the end consumer gets a better result. And they think better of estate agents because the general opinion of estate agents is, is not good worldwide. It's a negative, well, not necessarily worldwide, but in, the, in Ireland and the UK, it's the same. I think you know? we got our topic for our next uh, podcast, Regina. Regina, thank you very much for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. And uh, let's, let's keep in touch. Sloan.